Welcome to the Master Circle Podcast. I'm Dr. Bob Hoffman, and each week we'll be bringing you the freshest, most cutting-edge information in chiropractic, wellness, personal growth, and success. All the systems, strategies, and philosophies you need to grow your practice and life can be found in these podcasts. Follow the links below to learn more about the Master Circle and everything we have to offer you. Please enjoy this podcast edition, and let's keep growing together. One of the incredible perks of being the Master Talk interviewer is I get to sit with some of the absolute most brilliant, most cutting edge people, not only in the chiropractic profession, but beyond. And our guest on Master Talk this month is a gentleman who his pedigree in business consulting is unparalleled. He's written multiple best selling books. He's one of the most sought after lecturers. And what he's forgotten about business, most people will never know. Welcome to Master Talk, Michael Gerber. Thank you, Dennis. What a pleasure to have you here, sir. Delight. You are responsible in many ways for guiding the small business person in our country towards a better way of doing things. I've read everything that you've ever written, and I noticed that in the beginning, your writing was more about strategies, about what to do, a chief aim, a story. And these are very important aspects of the development of a business person. But with Emith Mastery and your new book, Awaken the Entrepreneur Within, you've turned your attention towards the identity of the business person toward the psychology of the business person. Could you please expound upon what some of the keys are for an individual to become the kind of person who could be an effective entrepreneur? Well, absolutely. In fact, it was interesting that only when I stopped operating my company, Emith Worldwide, did I really begin to dig down deeper into the entrepreneurial personality. I've written about the entrepreneur in all of my books. The E-Myth is the entrepreneurial myth. But I've not truly delved deep enough to discover what it is that differentiates a true entrepreneur from all of those business owners you're speaking about. And in my new book, Awakening the Entrepreneur Within, there are really four dimensions that I uncover. And interestingly, those four dimensions represent a process, an evolution, a hierarchy, in fact. First, the dreamer. Second, the thinker. Third, the storyteller. And fourth, the leader. And each of them play a significant role in this process. Without the dreamer, it wouldn't matter what anybody did. And in fact, that's played itself out with so many companies. It doesn't matter without a dream, without a great idea, without a great result in mind, without something that moves you, that you can't sleep because of that you're constantly in pursuit of, even though you don't have a clue how to do it. <laughs> right? And it's not having a clue how to do it, which is really, really the significant thing. Because if it was something that we already knew how to do, it wouldn't be a dream. It would simply be replicating the past or improving upon it, which is really a personal dream, but it's not an impersonal dream. So these very, very critical components of the entrepreneur, I believe, are what constitute what I now call the dreaming room. It's the place where somebody discovers what it means to awaken a part of yourself that's been in limbo, been asleep, been almost moribund, but coming to that place, suddenly realizing that you've come alive. And the entrepreneur is the creator. The entrepreneur is the inventor. The entrepreneur is the dreamer, if the entrepreneur is anything. So that's what my pursuit has been Wonderful. of late. Wonderful. So then the evolutionary process that somebody goes through, once they begin to formulate that dream, is they have to then think about exactly what they want to do. Is that the way it works? Well, it's really interesting because I use the template to describe this as best as I can. And you've got to understand, it's a very personal thing, while it's a very impersonal thing. <laughs> and I don't know how other to describe it than that. But as one begins to engage in the process of discovering either an experience in my life 
that is the source of the great result I wish to produce, or an experience of other people's lives and something that's missing, like Muhammad Yunus um, when he decided to take a stand against poverty. And essentially he said there is no reason, there's absolutely no rational reason for poverty existing in the world, none. And he set out to disprove the fact of poverty, Hmm. which essentially has become his purpose in life. With the invention of Grameen Bank, with the transformation of the lives of impoverished women, primarily, millions upon millions upon millions of them, with micro-lending, that is, not lent to someone because they can justify that they deserve it, but simply because they're impoverished and they have a way to become unimpoverished Mm. if only they had access to just a bit of capital, Hmm. just a bit, yes, Um, like $70, $120. Do you understand how absurd in one respect that is? Oh, but how powerful it is in the other respect. It's just stunning. Yes. So that realization that someone can do impossible things that everybody believes is not only improbable, but truly impossible, that this is a condition that we simply have to deal with Mm. and accept. He has shown we don't have to accept anything. Mm. None of these things constitute reality. They constitute a reality that's manufactured as a result of limits that we placed upon our imagination. That is self-imposed. Exactly right. And that's exactly why I want you to talk about this, specifically in the context of what a chiropractor or a wellness professional can do to apply the sequence of these four elements. Well, it's absolutely key to me. And this is what my movement is now. I am so clear that I need to attract people to a dreaming room. And let's take chiropractors. Chiropractors go to school to become a chiropractor. They learn how to become a chiropractor. Then they go out to be a chiropractor. And they are, as I've talked about in all of my e-myth books, technicians Mm -hmm. suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure, believing that, in fact, if I know how to do the work of a chiropractor, I know how to build a company that a chiropractor does that work in, and it's completely fallacious. Yes. And you've seen that. I you know see that. see it every day. You experience That's it. what you're doing here is to help us through that. Exactly. And so I realize that. And I've done this work with chiropractors. I've done this work with podiatrists. I've done this work with anybody and everybody who does anything that anybody can possibly imagine over the past 31 years in my company, Emith Worldwide. But I realize there's something missing. And the something missing is this spirit the spirit of the dream, the dream which goes significantly beyond my helping somebody being a chiropractor, but actually creating a revolution. The revolutionary within, the entrepreneur within, the imagineer, as Disney would Mm, call him, within, that person is moribund. That person is not alive. That person is not at the heart of most chiropractors, businesses, practices. It's simply not a part of the conversation. So I decided I'm going to have that conversation and I'm going to begin to engage people in a discussion and inquiry into what does it mean to truly dream? Yes. What does it mean to go beyond what I know how to do? What does it mean to create something I'd never even imagined I have the possibility of doing? What would it mean to take chiropractic and all of the other wellness modalities out in the world to transform the reality of wellness of the world? What would it mean if you did that, if I did that, if he did that, if they did that, if everybody here at the conference were to actually begin to imagine that they have the power, the capability, the imagination, the skill, the desire to pursue something bigger than they ever imagined they could possibly pursue, other than simply making a living being Mm -hmm, a professional. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in the process of that, I've discovered how limited people have manufactured their lives to be. And pulling them, kicking and screaming, (laughs) I mean pulling them out of that stuck place, that stuckness that represents the way most people in the world live, they suddenly discover something they never knew they had. 
So you've got to understand in this process that I engage them in, it's not about my imagination, though there's a great deal of that alive and well mm -hmm. in what I do, mm -hmm. but in their discovery of their imagination and also the limits they placed upon themselves. So share a little bit of technology. How do you actually do that? How do you stimulate people to dream? How do you pull it out of them? What has to happen for our listeners to come away from this interview with a sense of how to create this magnificent vision for their own life? Well, I wish I could tell you what the process is. And now let me explain this because I don't want to keep it a big, dark secret. you got to understand I have a methodology. And my methodology, my point of view is very, very simple. It's been that for 35 years. And I said, and I've invented this term, go to work on your company, not in your company. Yes. The difference is extraordinary. Go to work on the business, not in the business. Go to work on your practice, not just in your practice, to invent a practice that works without you. So the whole idea of the entrepreneurial skill or capability is the ability to see work as a system. And then to begin to see the series of things called work that integrate into this complex organism, this organization that becomes a company that has marketing, management, finance, operations, on and on and on and on and on. All of these elements of this company are truly the product of a designer's imagination. Mm. And the designer, the master of business design, is this entrepreneur. And I'm essentially saying to people that this is the process we're going to engage in. But we're going to do that with a blank piece of paper and beginner's mind. Mm. So what I do in my dreaming room for the first hour and 12 minutes... <laughs> And understand, this is the first dreaming room I did in 2005, December. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've done 37 of them now. Wonderful. I'm working in the dreaming room while I'm working on, on the dreaming room. Yes. I have my first dreaming room facilitator in training as oh, we speak. Oh, how wonderful. There will be thousands of them Yes. all over the world. Yes. And they will be doing something I'm doing, but something more than I'm doing. What I'm doing is discovering what it is to do this thing yeah. in the process of engaging people in what I call the hot seat. So we come together, 37 people or 1,000 people, mm -hmm. and the dreaming rooms of the future will be 1,000 people, 2,000 people. I have a dreaming room planned in New Zealand in the spring of next year with 3,000-plus people, and I will bring somebody out of the audience into a hot seat. After they've gone through a very, very simple process of dreaming. So I simply speak for about an hour and 12 minutes. And then I say, now it's your turn. And everybody, it's time to dream. I'm going to leave the room for 30 minutes. Please open the pad of paper in front of you. Take the colored pens that we've provided you and begin. It's time to dream. And then I leave. And then you leave. <laughs> then I leave, yeah. And then I leave. And I come back exactly 30 minutes later. Not 32. No, 30 just minutes. Sure. Okay. Absolutely 30 minutes. And <laughs> unless I'm just out of it, then it's 31. <laughs> you understand? Or 29. I get impatient. And I come back in and I pick somebody at random. And I say, come on up. Bring your pad with you. Now, Dennis, the first time I did this, you've got to understand, I just made this up. Mm -hmm. A blank piece of paper, beginner's mind, meaning I had to have blank pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beginner's mind, meaning I'm not interested in old co. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in what they came for. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. interested in any of their motivations, any of their <laughs> desires, anything at all they expect to get out of this. You understand? <laughs> it's like the most terrible, terrible, terrible thing anybody could possibly do to anybody. It's like it doesn't matter. But I don't tell them until the first person comes up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I simply take this piece of paper and begin to scrutinize it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you begin to do this for the first time with first one person, then two people, then six people, then 20 people, then 50 people, then 1,000 people, and on and on and on and on, when you begin to do this, you begin to discover the kinds of dreams people have. Mm. They don't have dreams. Mm. What they have is a picture with a mountain with a little lake and birds you've seen the picture of birds <laughs> and clouds you've seen the picture of clouds yes. and a little blonde woman and 
little children, <laughs> blonde children, and a big red car. And you begin to see that they dream about things, things which are ideas that have become ingrained in them as having value. Right. But it's no big idea. I have yet to see a big idea. Now, you got to understand it didn't say, okay, give me a big idea, mm -hmm. because all I would be doing would be setting it up. I don't say that. I just simply say, dream. Mm. And you discover postage stamps. <laughs> In fact, I printed one and simply say, here, use this. <laughs> it's like, now, I swear, now, this might sound terrible. These are bright, capable, mm. successful people. They have no knowledge of what it means to dream. Mm. We have a poster in the dreaming room, a statement by Van Gogh. And he said, I dream my paintings and I paint my dreams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I dream my paintings and I paint my dreams. What an extraordinary thing. Absolutely. Because in essence, that's what we all do as entrepreneurs and as anybody who wants to get anything accomplished is we dream our paintings and then we paint our dreams. You got it. Michael, you have so much to offer. I would love to have your comments on the other three aspects of the development of the entrepreneur. Let's say a chiropractor takes your course and establishes a sense of dreaming and reawakens something inside of him or herself. Then what? Let me give you a feeling for it. So I invented a company, Emith Worldwide, in 1977. I had a dream. Mm -hmm. My dream was to transform the state of small business worldwide. Mm -hmm. That was my dream before I opened the doors. That's my dream today, 31 years later. Yes. I had a vision. My vision is the product of the thinker. Mm -hmm. My vision was to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting. That's the strategic how I'm going to realize my dream. My purpose, which is really where the storyteller comes in, my purpose is the who. My purpose is to make it possible for every single person who would start a business of their own to succeed in growing it beyond anything they could even imagine and for it to provide their customer with a transformational experience and for it to be scalable. So my purpose, the product of the storyteller, is to tell that story and to provide that ability for any single person, every person on the face of this earth who's ever called to start a company, given what my dream is, given what my vision is, to be able to do that again and again and again, which flies in the face of the obvious experience of most people. And I have a mission. My mission is the product of the leader, and this is to manifest the dream, manifest the dream in reality. So the mission was to invent a turnkey consulting system, McDonald's, mm -hmm. a turnkey consulting system that a pure novice could learn and in the learning of it, deliver it to any kind of business whatsoever anywhere in the world at less than the cost of a minimum wage employee and produce these stunning results that I'm talking about. So I had a dream, a vision, a purpose, and a mission. You begin to see that. You begin to see the relationship. It's like bringing heaven to earth. The dream is heaven, and the system is where it comes to earth and transforms the experience of people's lives. That's what it was for me. Well, I'm simply saying that's what it is for you. So if you think of Master Circle, you have a dream. Yes. When you think about your vision, you have a vision. When you think about your purpose, you think about your purpose. When you think about your mission, and you have to communicate that and articulate that clearly, 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 clearly. And when you do... What is happening then in your company is every single thing you do in your company is reflected by the dream, the vision, the purpose, and the mission, and everybody understands it. And that's what I saw was missing in the 70-plus thousand companies we have consulted, we have coached, we have mentored over the past 31 years. What's missing is that grounded experience, that grounded purpose, that grounded drive that's absolutely essential for there to be an emotional fiber that sustains you even when the thing has fallen apart. Mm. I know what I'm here to do. I cannot not do this. That's what it was like for me. 
You understand? It's falling apart. It's coming down around my ears. I have no clue how to do it. And I simply persist. Why? Because it's so important. Michael, you have encapsulated the evolution of the chiropractic professional over the last 112 years. This is indeed what chiropractors need to hear, that there is a technology to take their dreams and transform them into reality, and that in the face of adversity, to be grounded is the word you use. I think that's marvelous, to be grounded in the reality that you know you can create, whether you know how to do it at this moment or not. This is among the most inspiring messages anybody can hear. Michael Gerber, you are a living treasure, and I thank you so much for being part of our Master Talk interview. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Master Circle Podcast. Many of our podcast listeners ask about the source of these shows. Well, they come from seminars, teleclasses, interviews, and audio albums, many of which are available for purchase at the Master Circle Marketplace. Just go to www.themastercircle.net and look through our vast library of useful, practical, and inspiring audio materials. And if you'd like to attend one of our live seminars, just call us at 800-451-4514, and we'll be happy to register you. It's a pleasure to serve you and keep growing yourself and growing your practice.